what is up guys, Klaus next here. Thanks for your patience, I'm back with another video. So last year, at the end of my strength training period, I made an update video where I talked about some of the numbers I hit, where my body weight was at, kind of my goals, stuff like that. So I wanted to do that again this year. And if I can continue to do this maybe once a year, I can reflect and see where I can improve. So this was a big year for me in terms of uh, strength training because as you guys know, I got into Strongman. And that was a huge motivation for me to grow stronger. So I had this fire burning under me. So my results really shot up this year. And I would also like to say before I start to tell you numbers again, that this was my first time taking strength training very seriously. Like my last update video, I have strength trained before for a designated period of time. I have a bit of a shaky program, but this year I really tightened up my program. I improved on my programming. I was more consistent, less eagle lifting, and I had a really strong source of motivation. So, so my results from this strength period and that strength period are quite drastic. So I'm gonna start with the biggest overall improvement, and that was with my deadlift. So the last time, like a year ago, uh, my deadlift, I could do 405. The most I've done 405, so four plates for, I was able to do it for two reps. This year, in my first competition, I was able to rep 420 for seven reps, and then I was able to deadlift a car that was roughly 500 pounds for nine reps. So at the end of my strength training period, I wrapped it up nicely with a bow, hitting a 500 pound deadlift for a single. It was a very rough single. The form was uh, pretty, pretty brutal, and I was kind of shaking and hinging and trying to get the, the deadlift up. It's not a very nice deadlift, but at least my body's been exposed to what it feels like to hold that much weight on my hand and how to get it off the ground. So sometimes hitting a PR is shaky and rough at first, but then at least your body kind of knows that you're able to lift that weight and you can get there mentally and then you can improve and uh, my next PR goal isn't going to be more weight it's just going to be to improve on that one single rep and once I improve on that one single rep I'm going to start to see how many reps for it I can do so I essentially added a hundred pounds to my deadlift in one year and I'm gonna make a video on that separately talking about how exactly I did that. The second thing I wanna talk about is my overhead press. Now, because I was in strongman, and overhead press is an essential to that sport, I really doubled down on my overhead press because it wasn't very good. I really had to improve it, so in part, the reason my numbers uh, went up so high on the overhead press is because I was kind of an overhead press noob, and uh, these are kind of noob gains. Noob, noob into mediocre strong gains. For my strength training period, I was able to do 115 for five, and then at a strongman competition, I was able to do 180 for four. So I added 65 pounds to my overhead press, which I'm very proud of. And for my next strength training period, I hope to do even better than that, because I think that I'm still in those beginner strength stages for overhead press, so I think that there's a lot of potential to be had there still. For the bench press, uh, I only did bench training in my strength period before my strongman comp, so uh, it's kind of half of my strength training period I did. I committed to the bench press. I was benching twice a week because I really wanted to improve. And now you guys know that bench isn't my favorite lift. Uh, I'm not very good at it, but I really worked hard on getting my 225 rep a lot cleaner because I was only able to do two plates for a very rough one rep. Never been a good bencher, but I was able to get 225 for six reps and they were very clean, strong. I felt really good uh, for six reps. So I'm really proud of that. I've, re I've got a really good foundation going into my next strength training period. Remember, it's not always about hitting a massively large PR that was way heavier than your last one. Sometimes it's just cleaning up the reps a little bit. The next lift is a power clean. So the last time that I had tested my power clean, I was able to do 185 for one. I made a video of it on my YouTube channel way back. And then this period, while I was training Strongman, I was able to clean 225. Couldn't press it, but I could clean it. So that was a 40 pound increase in my power clean. As far as squats go, the, uh, I, I really was focusing more on fixing my back because squatting is what hurt my back. So I wasn't doubling down and seeing how much weight I could do. I was mostly just trying to be able to squat without pain. So I was just doing mostly physio-based squat exercises for the first part of my strength period. And then uh, I, I switched over to doing front squat. You know, I regret this. I should have done more squatting in my strongman program. Uh, the last time that I had done front squats, I did two plates for five. It's really not that impressive, but it was the best that I'd done in a strength period. And I didn't really pursue squatting very much. I didn't really train for it. I know I could have done more than that. I know I for sure would have hit three plates on a front squat, maybe more. I didn't really train for it, so uh, it hindered my results and probably my ability is competing as a strongman. So definitely gonna focus more on squats for my next training period. So those are some of the more conventional powerlifting exercises that you can just do in a gym. Next I'm gonna talk about some strongman stuff because this is my first time doing strongman this year. So obviously uh, I'm hitting some massive PRs because I'm going from zero pounds to hundreds of pounds. So I'm gonna start with the yoke because I learned this year 
that I'm really good at the oak. I really always thought that the oak was gonna suck. I was kind of like, eh, I wanna do strongman, but I wanna do the oak, it looks really hard. But it turns out I was actually um, very good at it and I excelled, I made very fast progress. So within, uh, you know, four months maybe, I got my yoke up to 560 pounds. That is when I stopped doing yoke because my second competition didn't have the yoke, so I stopped training yoke. So where I was, that's where I cut off my training. Next is the farmers, and I'm really proud of the farmers because uh, I went from no experience with farmer walks to doing 250 pounds a hand. So that's a total of, you know, carrying 500 pounds in your hands. And I carried it for uh, just over 80 feet. So that whole stretch in the competition, and then I turned the corner. So I don't know how many extra feet that corner is. Maybe it's an extra five feet, 10 feet, I don't know. But uh, anyways, super proud of that. That's more than I could have asked for. And, and my grip strength has improved so much since I did Strongman. Next thing is Atlas Stones. Um, I didn't train Atlas Stones as much as I should have. So I went from not being able to pick up Atlas Stones to being able to pick up 230 pound Atlas Stone three times in a competition. That was within a 60 second time frame. It's hard to say if I could have done more if I didn't have a 60 second time frame, but it is what it is. The reason I didn't do better with Atlas Stones is because I always did them at the end of my Strongman workouts because I was putting tacky on my hands. When you leave it for right at the end of the Strongman workout, if you've ever done an Atlas Stone, it's super grueling, it's a full body experience, and it's just super hard. So there were some days where I was like, I just went super hard on farmer's walks and I didn't have any grip and I'm like, ah, pass on the Atlas Stones today. You know, sometimes I'd pass two weeks in a row, which was not good because <laughs> I could have done better and it would have helped me in both my competitions. So next up, this is just pretty much the same as a barbell, but it's an axle. So the axle bar is a lot wider than the barbell. So it's a lot harder to pull the same weight you do with the barbell. So I went from never doing barbell deadlifts to obviously, like I said earlier, seven reps in a competition using an axle bar. A barbell itself empty weighs about 45 pounds and an axle bar weighs about, depending on where you get it and where it was made, the one I was training with was about 70, 75 pounds. And then in the competition, we did also have to press the axle bar too. So it wasn't just that lifting it, it was also, I uh, did some overhead pressing with the axle bar. And then the last number I want to talk about is the circus dumbbell. Um, I trained super hard for it and didn't even end up making it to it in the competition because I changed the order of the lifts. But uh, I still want to include this because I trained very hard at my dumbbell overhead pressing and I'm really proud of the progress I made. Everything in Strongman you put over your head, you have to be able to pick up to your shoulders. And so uh, I was able to clean and press a 140 pound dumbbell twice. Okay, um, but I, I would like to add it wasn't as strict as it should have been. I don't know if it would have been strongman legal. It's still an overhead press to me, but I had to stabilize it with my hand. And then I, when I use my leg drive, I would let go. So it's not totally legal, but the press is still being made. Without using my hand to stabilize the dumbbell, like if I was just holding it here with just my arm, I was able to do 120 pounds strict. So if I wanted to do anything more than that, I really needed the help of my other hand. So there are other strongman events that uh, I always improved on, you know, I was able to overhead press the sandbag that was 100 pounds, 100 pound keg, you know, there's a bunch of other really like little unique strongman things, like clipping a 600 pound tire, stuff like that, that's, I don't really want to include any kind of training on that because it's, it's a random odd object and the only way you get better at doing those odd objects is to keep practicing with them. The weight's kind of all over the place, so. I'm not really including that in this video for progress. And before I wrap up the video, I just want to talk about body weight really quick. Uh, I was able to maintain a body weight of 230 pounds through my whole strength training period. Um, I ate a lot of food, you know, obviously you have to eat a lot of food when you're strength training for anything. And right now I'm actually weighing 223. So I cut to 225 for my competition and I actually lost a couple pounds after my competition. So I'm kind of really feeling good. I'm really feeling like I'm in a good place with my body weight. And I'm also really glad I didn't blow up like a balloon during strength training for Strongman because I've seen that tends to be what happens. But uh, I'm living proof that you're able to strength train for strength without putting on a ton of body weight. As long as you keep track of what you're eating, you know the nutrients you're putting in your body, you know the calories and what they're worth. You can eat more, you just have to be smarter about it. So since I did it in my last video, I figured I may as well do Quick body update, take this big yeah shirt off. Okay, so I haven't worked out today, I don't have a pump. This is just me flat on a Thursday afternoon. Way too much freaking light coming in here. But uh, the biggest thing that I noticed after this strength training period, and especially after really working hard to improve my bench, is that my chest muscles came out a little bit. Uh, I've always been very flat chested, 
my, uh, my whole life. So it was nice to see those chest muscles come out. And then obviously with all the strength training, all your other muscles get a little bit bigger. I've always had very large traps, but uh, you know, they just continue to grow the more that I strength train. Triceps got bigger with all the overhead pressing. Obviously biceps got better with all the cleaning. And it's hard to tell, but if I can get the lighting right, forearms definitely got a lot stronger. It's kind of hard to tell with forearms. They just sometimes get more defined. And then this is me kind of in a relaxed state, but if I wanted to look good, I would suck in and I would flex a little bit. So you can kind of see, I got those fat abs going on. Got a bit of the serratus going on over here. Can't really see what I'm doing, but there's the rhomboid shot, upper back. I've always done well with upper back. The shell. And, oh, you get the light right. I almost don't feel like a fat guy. Okay, that's enough of that. Oh man. Kids just got out of school. I didn't even realize it till now. There's like rows of students coming down the sidewalk and my window's wide open. So uh, if you hear sirens coming on the next video within the next few seconds, uh, I'm probably going to jail. So smash that like button if you want me to go to jail. Smash that like button if you don't want me to go to jail. And then smash that subscribe button so that uh, while I'm in jail, I'll get enough subscribers and make some money off my YouTube videos. Okay, that's going to wrap up this video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening through it. I'm glad that you're interested in this kind of stuff. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. It would really help me grow my channel. Boss, I out.